Okay, so we are just a little bit behind schedule here, but I'm going to do a, a brief introduction of our next speaker. Elizabeth Merritt is the Vice President of Strategic Foresight and, found, and the Founding Director of the Center for the Future of Museums at the American Alliance of Museums. Uh, the Center for the Future of Museums is a think tank and research and development lab. And we'll post the link uh, to that site um, in the chat here moving forward. But Elizabeth, take it away. Thank you so much. Hey, Paul, I'm just going to ask, gonna ask for help making sure that I'm sure, sharing my sure. screen appropriately. So I'm going to hit share. How's that looking? Uh, oh, something's happening. We can see it. Fabulous. OK, then I'm going to start my timer. Well, as Anne-Marie said, I'm the Vice President for Strategic Foresight and Founding Director of the American Alliance of Museums Center for the Future of Museums. You may be familiar with my work through either the CFM blog or our forecasting reports. We write the annual Trends Watch report, our e-newsletter dispatches from the future of museums, or the research reports that we release throughout the year. We recently released one about the current state of museums during the COVID epidemic. Today's format is that I'm going to throw you 10 lightning topics, things that it might be worth thinking about as cultural organizations during and after the pandemic. I'm going to observe very briefly what's happening right now, and then I'm going to speculate about what this might create in the future. Emphasis, these are speculations, not predictions. These are what a friend of mine would call little brain grenades for you to walk away with to see if they provoke thinking later. So with that introduction, let's get started. Any of these could provoke, could support a longer discussion, and I'd be happy to follow up with you about that. Number one, let's think about digital opportunities. During the pandemic, 98% of museums in the US closed, and we saw a huge pivot to digital. Everybody was on Facebook and Instagram and pumping out videos and doing digital escape rooms and giving tours behind the scenes and creating programming for school students, which is great. And in fact, we know from studies that 53% of the public participated in digital cultural activities during the pandemic. And better news, many of these are people who don't usually visit museums. So that leads to the thought, in the future, will museums learn to monetize digital activities, which is something they aren't very good at right now? This could be through dues and subscriptions, or through advertising revenue, or by cultivating donors who become fans of online content, or by converting digital users to actual in-place visitors. OK, topic number two, P through 12 education. Any of you who are parents or otherwise helping with young people during the pandemic know how difficult this has been. And we have seen museums doing awesome work. Museums are sometimes opening up their closed exhibits as places to study and for schools to hold classes. Some museums are providing mentoring and supervision for students who need a quiet, secure place to study online, including high-speed internet access, which they might not have at home. Well, this is interesting. In the future, will we see more long-term integration of museums into formal education? Will this emergency work stick? Might we see more museum schools, either museums operating schools on their premises or schools regularly using museums as accessory classrooms? Might we even see public funding of museums as an essential part of the school system? Number three, supporting the vulnerable. During the pandemic, we've seen museums, again, doing fabulous work. Some are using their outside grounds and gardens to grow food and give it away. Some are making space available for food distribution or for COVID-19 testing. Some are helping museums access, some museums are helping people access services in the community, giving guides to where they can go for what kinds of testing or support. In the future, Maybe this will lead to long-term partnerships with social services and nonprofit relief services. These are sort of ad hoc, wonderfully thrown together situations right now, but maybe it can be part of an existing enduring infrastructure. So museums could be something that society looks to to mobilize in emergencies like this. Number four, volunteers. During the pandemic, the American Association of Museum Volunteers reports that 84% of museums put their volunteers on lead and 90% anticipate returning to open status with fewer volunteers. 
And when they're asked why, a third of museums cite age of volunteers as an issue, because of course, museums tend to attract older people as volunteers and older individuals are more at risk for COVID. So some museums are using an increased use of digital platforms to stay in touch, either to give volunteers real digital work without having to come into the museum or through staying engaged and providing to support for them as individuals. So in the future, first of all, are those people going to come back or are we going to see fewer museum volunteers as museums reopen because the volunteers have found other opportunities? Will we see a change in demographics of museum volunteers? Are we going to see a greater preponderance of young people? And in which case are they going to want different kinds of work? Or will they expect different kinds of support? And overall, are we going to provide more digital opportunities? Are museums going to say, wow, there were some really great things that museum volunteers were doing during the pandemic online. Let's keep recruiting them for that. Number five, tourism. You are all experiencing the fact that we've had a nearly complete collapse of international interstate tourism. And a lot of museums have concentrated when they can be open on serving local audiences. In the future, are some museums going to have to wean their financial model models away from tourism or at least have a stable base they can pivot to when tourism isn't uh, is is not in play, which happened after the 9-11 terrorist attacks. So this isn't a singular event. Some museums may have to learn to court repeat local attendance rather than just being the destination to go to when you're in town. And that might affect the types and schedules of exhibits they put on. They might want a more robust cycle of rotation so that there's always something new to get that local audience to come back. It also might lead museums to think of themselves more as social hangouts, not just in destinations for the visitor, but as places that are a regular part of the community. Number six, higher education. During the pandemic, there have been drops in enrollment, Higher education colleges and universities are taking tremendous financial losses. They've already begun to make deep cuts to faculty and staff. And this is important for museums because there are over 2,700 academic museum and galleries in the US. I wonder if in the future we might see fewer academic museums as colleges and universities are trying to cut what might be considered to be amenities as they reduce their budgets. On the other hand, we might see more value placed on academic museums as colleges and universities want to justify the cost of an on-campus college experience. And in any case, there may be more pressure for academic museums to be financially independent of their university parents. Number seven, financial impact on museums. Hang on to your hats, this gets grim. According to the latest data from AAM that we just released, museums anticipate losing 35% of their operating income this year and 28% next year. Most museums tell us they have six months or less of operating reserves on hand. And 29% of directors are not confident their museums will be able to survive the pandemic. So in the future, are we gonna see more museums partnering to share back of house services in order to reduce expenses? Are we gonna see mergers and acquisitions? as museums either try and find ways to survive in their mission and collections without having to operate as independent entities. Or maybe they'll go virtual. Maybe they'll say we can maintain our digital content and ditch the actual physical building and collections. Number eight, museum labor. During the pandemic, 53% of museums have furloughed or laid off staff as of October. And back in June, museums told us that they, reop they foresaw reopening with smaller staff. 41% said that. So in the future, first of all, as museums reopen and rebuild, is the mix of positions going to change? Are we going to see some recent positions that have received a lot of emphasis, like director of community engagement or vice president of inclusion, maintain, while other positions, maybe front of house or education, that are being replaced by digital or streamlined functions, maybe those positions will be reduced. If we're gonna be faced with higher unemployment in the museum field, could that drive wages even lower than they are now? And museums might try and make more use of flexible contract staff. And in response, we may see an acceleration of the already existing drive to unionize as museum staff try and maintain their working conditions and their pay. 
Number nine, orphan collections. Well, during the pandemic, as I said, there's a ton of economic stress. We see a potential for museums to close and we're seeing downsizing of staff. So there might, might be more economic caution about what new collections to take on. I wonder if in the future we're going to see a surge in orphaned collections in the US, important scientific, historic or artistic collections that have been perforce abandoned by their institutions. In that case, we might see a need for a national clearinghouse to try and place those collections with suitable public nonprofit homes. And we might even see, this is a wish, a federal dowry endowment to send money with those collections to make sure that the institutions that adopt them are able to care for them appropriately. And last, number 10, grants and endowments. During the pandemic, we're already seeing some funders generously loosening restrictions on grant expenditures to help keep their grantees afloat. And we know that some museums have received permission from their boards to release board restricted endowments. And you may have noticed the Association of Art Museum Directors temporarily suspended sanctions against museums that chose to use restricted funds for general operating expenses. So I wonder if in the future, first of all, among donors and funders, we might see a resurgence of general operating support, which was out of favor for a while, but is increasingly obvious is necessary for financial stability. We might see more pressure on donors to give unrestricted gifts that can be used as they need to be used in emergencies. And I wonder if in some restricted gifts, we're gonna to begin to see emergency clauses where museums uh, basically get pre-approval in case of extreme financial and national pandemic distress to release those funds to ensure the organization's survival. There, that's 10 ideas in 10 minutes. And here's some information about how to stay in touch with me. But meanwhile, I think we can pivot to questions.